down the centuries, whether in frail bark-covered coracle, lavishly decorated galley, swift barkentine or clipper ship, men have striven for mastery of the seas, men against the sea, against wind and wave, discovering new lands, new adventure, new romance. These square-rigged ships under full sail, with the wind whistling through the yard arms and filling their main and fore topsails, are picturesque relics of the past. Well, as time went on, square sails gradually gave way to the fore and aft rig schooner, a faster, more efficient rig. Built for fishing on the Grand Banks, the Blue Nose, Pride of Nova Scotia, and the Gertrude L.T. Bow out of Gloucester racing here, are the fastest sailing ships ever to have green water sweep their decks. But the lure of the sea was not alone for ships of commerce. Pleasure boating and amateur racing have become increasingly popular. Until today, there are myriads of yachts of all rigs and sizes competing daily for sailing honors. See these tiny crafts skimming over the surface of Long Island Sound. Their amateur skippers handling the helm like veteran seamen, taking advantage of each favorable slant of wind in an effort to cross the other's bow to victory. And here off the coast of Long Beach, California, a sailing regatta for larger class boats is underway. With a fresh flowing breeze, they fairly fly along the course, parachute spinnakers billowing and every inch of canvas taking the full force of the wind. Rounding the light, they come into the last leg, a beat to windward. It is in windward work such as this that a skipper really shows his class, for a good windward sailor is a winning sailor. Newport, Rhode Island. Thousands of spectators are on hand to watch the challenge race for America's Cup. It's a symphony of white and blue as Great Britain's challenger, Endeavour II, scuds across the starting line first, with the American Defender Ranger close behind. With sails close hauled, they beat out to windward on the first leg. Running free on the second leg, Endeavour's giant parachute spinnaker is drawing beautifully. But coming about around the last marker, Ranger gives her weight to the challenger and crosses the finish line well ahead to win the cup once more. Some 5,000 miles to the western lies exotic Honolulu. Here where white crested comas roll in on famed Waikiki Beach, the sport is riding the surf, not the sea. These outrigged canoes of traditional native design, built for swift passage in the boiling surf, though seaworthy, are extremely tricky to handle. Roaring in on a foaming crest, only expert teamwork and perfect coordination are between a thrill and a crashing spill. But surfboarding is the island pastime, probably more closely associated with Waikiki than even the hula. Paddling out these hundred pound slabs of koa wood is no easy job for the novice, for it takes practice and plenty of back muscle. Finding an incoming wave, the rider assumes his stance on the slope of the roller just ahead of the crest. Using one foot as a rudder, no little skill is required to hold one of these dancing planks on the crest of a comber that may reach a height of 15 feet before breaking.
even the approach of dusk does not still the sportsman's ardor for the thrill of riding the crest. makes and rides the crest. Here, horsepower, not the elements, sends the blood tingling through one's veins. Bouncing and skipping over the rippled waters of the Hudson River, these tiny outboard craft roar over the course at breakneck speed. Skidding on dangerous turns, wrecked by the wake of others, it takes a steady hand to pilot these water bronze. Watch it, cowboy! Oh, what a spill! But others go on to new records, new racing laws. Larger and faster, these streamlined torpedoes fairly fly over the Potomac in their dash for the President's Cup. Their thundering engines driving them frantically through the churning water. They skid dangerously around the hairpin turns in their death-defying struggle for fame and fortune. Bluebird II, built and designed by that racing king of speed, Sir Malcolm Campbell, is the fastest thing afloat. Here on the placid waters of Lake Coniston, she has launched for a trial run. And she's away with Campbell at the wheel, hitting an all-time record speed of 142 miles an hour. But to the true sailor, neither daring stunt nor breakneck speed can equal for sheer joy and romance the saltiest thrill of all, the ocean race. Here in this Blue Water Classic from Miami to Nassau are boats famous in the yachting world. There's a song in the hearts of these sailors as they hoist sail. Weighing and tying anchor, they head for the starting line. As the seconds click off before the start, wily skippers jockey for position. Aboard the race committee's boat, the scene is closely watched. The gun, and they're away with the wind. This is a true sailor's race, and only sturdy craft built for deep sea cruising can face the choppy waters of the Gulf Stream. Though Nassau on the chart lies only 180 miles away, these sleek yachts must battle their way through cross seas nearly 400 miles as headwinds hold. As they pound along their course to the accompaniment of the wind whistling in the rigging and the music of splashing waters, hands are kept busy changing the trim of sails, taking positions and meeting the emergency of the moment. There's the stormy weather, winner of many ocean races, with a lee rail awash in every inch of canvas pulling hard, gliding toward her goal. In the distance looms Nassau light and the last mile. Stormy showing the way once more. With a song of victory ringing in their ears, it will not be long before these sailors again answer the call of the sea and are once more away with the wind. Thank you. 